We've rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. We really do appreciate earning your listening ears. want to remind you that if you've missed most of this show or others, check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram, Spaced Out Radio Show. We continue on tonight with the unbiased UFO report. Fedora John Hudson is back. And you know we love it when he's here breaking down the latest UFO news. John, it is always a pleasure to have you here, my friend. And you know what? I'm going to grind my teeth through this first one. (laughs) I am going to grind my teeth. Tom DeLonge getting vindication through an Esquire magazine article? Come on. You you know, I almost didn't even bother putting any other items in in my list for I figured this won't be <laughs> one article will take all of our time. But yeah, I mean, first off, I, I, you know, I think that the person who wrote this has been listening to your show, and I think, I think they wrote this just for you. Um, uh, one hell of a title. Um, you know, the way it was written, it almost seems like um, this might have somehow been tied into that video interview we saw recently with him on the beach. If it's not the same interview, then he was doing multiple interviews the same day because the writer describes the same scene that we saw in the video interview of him. Um, but, you know, I I got to say, I was I was kind of blown away by the article. It was actually a, a kind of an interesting article. And um, the, the writer of it um, really uh, put a lot of effort into rationalizing and grasping the concepts that that tom was talking about and i mean you know as well as i do how tom talks right i mean he 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 takes some of the the deeper uh concepts that you and i you know deal with in our research and and just kind of you know just dumps them out into conversation (laughs) you know just blah 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 and it catches people off guard and she and she really tried to um uh, she really tried to internalize it and um and they talked about they talked about spoon bending they talked about bigfoot they talked about um you know ufos they talked about um you know he he explained his hypothesis that essentially um that that time is 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 unified and that you know that uh, all timelines happen at the same time and that ufos are just uh, others from other timelines that are able to slip through to our timeline and that they're more like submarines displacing space time than than ships and i mean he he covers the gambit um it was actually it was a it, for for an interview that wasn't very long, it, it, he covered the gambit of of topics, and the writer um, really tried to grasp what he was talking about. And uh, I I don't know if they succeeded or not, but what I was kind of surprised that I came away with was this realization that if if someone who's totally foreign to these concepts is is presented these concepts in a in an, in, an, in an environment where they have an open mind, um, I guess what I'm coming to is it it, it left me with, a, with a, a lot more hope than I thought it would that essentially a lot of the more difficult concepts that, that folks like you and I study are, are going to be actually considered and, and, and people are going to actually try to understand them that, that don't do this kind of research. Okay, I'll give you that. And and you know, Esquire magazine's a pretty big magazine to do a to do a an article on. I, I get yeah. that. And I can appreciate the the run on that and the fact that he did the article. Good for him. Do you think that with his recent podcast that he did with Jim Semivan and he's done now two interviews, do you think that he's trying to rebuild his name in ufology right now? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, and personally, um, you know, uh, I would advise him to do that exact thing. Now, on that same personal note, I would suggest he he did a little bit longer. 
um, give a little more, you know, give them a little more breathing room between, you know, uh, past events and now. But I think I think he feels a fair amount of pressure to do this because of of what he thinks is coming next. And and then the flip side of it, too, is that he still is the CEO of a media company that is producing movies and and books, books that a lot of the people in this community actually really enjoy. And so there is still a business there to support. And, you know, he needs to have a a a, at least somewhat of a of a of a reputation in this field to be able to be CEO of a company like that. So well, I think outside, he has to. outside of outside of UFO Twitter, he has no reputation. He blew that reputation. Well, that's what I thought, but he just got this beautiful article on uh, Esquire. I yeah, mean, but any, anybody could write a fluff piece, though. I know, I know, but I guess I guess what I found myself thinking about Dave, and and it kind of made me giggle a little bit, to be really honest with you, because of the conversations you and I've had. But it's it's the realization that. Um, the average person is not going to take the kind of discerning eye to Tom DeLong that a lot of people in this community would or, or have. And, um, and so they're going to look at a lot of, of little pieces of information that are in the mainstream media and stitch those together to form an opinion of him. And uh, my personal guess at this point is that he pulls it off. My personal guess at this point is that he he does get vindicated, and at least in the mainstream media, he becomes a bit of a of a darling when it comes to this topic. Well, we'll see how much media attention he could get because, I mean, his sister Carrie DeLong is his press person. And well, he could just take his clothes off, and you know, I mean, it's worked before. Well, yeah, <laughs> well, it does. You know, look, I don't have anything against Tom DeLong, the the gentleman. I don't know the man. I will fully admit I like Blink-182. I wish he would go back there. Okay? I really do. Okay? The album, Take Off Your Clothes and Jacket, was was fantastic. It really was. But he has just, to me... I'm going to put it this way. Tom DeLong to me, is everything that is wrong with ufology. And I know that's a strong statement to make, but from not going from alienating the UFO people who've been doing this for decades, the experiencers who've been experiencing for decades, he had an opportunity. I was told by an insider this very close to this situation. They knew starting the TTSA that they had an opportunity to really bring ufology together and really make a major, major statement with all of us behind them. They had more people than every NFL stadium filled behind them. And the first thing that they did was they cut out ufology. They cut out all the researchers. They cut out everybody who had experiences. They cut out their biggest supporters. And that was one of the black eyes that killed the TTSA and sees it in the remnants we see it today. And that's all because of DeLong. It's not because of Semivan. It's not because of Robert Bigelow. It's not because of Lou Elizondo or Chris Mellon or Steve Justice or Hal Putoff or anybody else involved. Gary Nolan for his short time when he was there. Okay, This is all on DeLong. And for the fact that he's now going to try and rebuild himself, Hey, I'm all about second chances, but are you going to do it right this time, or are you going to play rock star again in the UFO field? Well, it, look, look, Dave. I think what it comes down to is, is I think that one. I think I think all your criticisms of 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 the way he handled this are are all very valid in in almost everyone's eyes. I think that your emotional reaction to that stuff is is completely valid and normal because this is a this is a a, a research field that that you obviously care a little more than a little about, right? I mean, you've put a lot of your personal life into this, into this field. Right. And he basically, you know, flittered on odor over and danced all over the, the, the semi. I mean, it's like, I mean, he, he, like everything you said, he did to something that a lot of uh, people really care about and, and should care about. And so it's hard not to take offense to that. And I totally, I totally get that. Um, 
but I, I, for me, um, you know, while I liked Blink 82, I wasn't a big fan. For me, it's that, um, with me, to be very honest, it's me. Tom and I are, are close to the same age. We both grew up in California around the same time. We had a lot of the same influences. To me, he's just another UFO nut that loves the topic and got a, a little over his skis. And, and so if he wants there. to slide back into that researcher role, I'm all for that. I'm all for that, too. Okay, but he he's been put on a pedestal since day one. Yes. Okay, when he was named by the International UFO Congress as Researcher of the Year before his book came out and before the Two the Stars Academy even was formed. All right, because organizers, certain organizers for that event were already kissing his butt. Yeah. All right, it was, kind of, it was kind of like when they gave Obama the um, uh, what was it? The was it Nobel? P no, was it? The Nobel Peace Prize, I think it was. They gave it to him like, a, like his, fir his first year. No, but I'm saying it was a similar idea that, that he got that someone got an award for what they were going to do versus what they had already done. And, Absolutely. And because of the amount of excitement, right? And and then it hurt them because they got it too early, right? So right. that's the comparison I'm okay, drawing. Yeah. I see where you're um, going. With that. You know, yeah. I mean, it, it was um, you know, it, it um no, I mean, I totally forgot about that. And um, you know. Oh yeah. I mean, that was a, that was a, that was a, it, it, yeah. I mean, look, I guarantee you in hindsight, well, I would hope in hindsight, he would play this out completely differently. I don't uh, see and it. I, I uh, and maybe you're right. And maybe that's just who Tom is, but I agree with what you said earlier. And it, and it bothers me personally that I think there was an opportunity. I think there was a really, a really nice, there's always going to be the vision. There's always going to be Pepsi versus Coke, but I think there was a real opportunity to, to create a unifying um, a group within this community and they didn't just not pull it off. They, they went in the complete opposite direction yeah. and in many ways made it worse. And, you know, I wish I could give up my source on that. I really, really wish I could give up my source because my source is very close to this situation and has filled me in on a lot of the back story of what happened there. And well, I, honestly, I don't think you. I don't think you need to give away your source. I don't think what you. I don't think. I don't think what your source told you is is it in any way, shape, or form unbelievable. I, I think no. it's something most people would just accept as true because it sounds. It sounds completely logical. No, I I understand that, my man. I understand that. My thing is now I'm grinding my gears because I was happy that Tom DeLong had gone away. <laughs> okay. I really was because I was sick of the game. I was sick of the, what if I told you I was yeah, sick. That, that was, that I was, was sick hard. of the posts that he would post some fake UFO video and two hours later would yank it down, which by the way, insiders tell me this was a big, big no, no for that group. And he, they asked him a number of times to stop. And finally they started threatening him that if you continue this, we are going to resign. That is insider info right there. Okay. I, I heard it went as far as, as as people developing a little bit of PTSD that when their phones would go off, they were scared that oh oh no, oh no, what's what's yes. what's Tom done now? <laughs> what's Tom done now? I mean, here's the thing. I even put this in my 14 reasons. Okay, there's a time to rock star and there's a time yeah. not to rock yeah. star. And oh, throughout yeah. his TTSA career. It's uh, he's always chosen time not to rock star to rock star, if that makes any sense. He he's consistent. I'll give him that. Yes, very very consistent, and I just I hope he comes in with a different attitude. I don't expect it. I expect it to be much the same. Where it's screw you, ufology. I'll do what I want, and look what I got, and look at me, and follow me once again. Well, and, his, his, go ahead. So go ahead. I was going to say his, his theory of everything interview he did with Jim Simivan sitting there with him. Um, he, he was, he, if he'd been, if he'd behaved like that from the beginning, it would have been a whole different ball game. He was, Semivan was clearly had, had, had a huge influence on him. Well, I mean, that is a, that is a good mentor to have. And, and one of the big questions is in the UFO world, why is Semivan, uh, stepped with him? And stuck with them. And I do know that Semi Van has listened to our show to check out what we've said about this whole situation. He has. He's probably hoping Tom will teach him those three chords he knows. 
God, I need to learn those three chords again. <laughs> I almost got two of them. I got two of them. I need that third one. I forget it again. All right. We got time for one more story here, my friend. And yes. the Demi Lovato trailer is released. Let's stick with the celebs. Yes, yes, yes. And, um, you know, I mean, um, it's, I don't, I don't think it's bad. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, everyone should check it out. I'll post a link later. Um, you know, uh, you know, the hard thing for me is I don't have a terribly strong opinion of, uh, or, or a, a terribly happy view of pretty much all the other paranormal content out there. And so she doesn't have a huge bar to hit, you know? And with that in mind, I think it's kind of interesting. You know, I, I mean, I'll check it out, you know, at least one episode. I, I encourage everyone to check it out. She's she's definitely taking it seriously. Hey, I'll be the bad guy here again, times two. All right. Boy, you're you're coming off looking like roses tonight. <laughs> All right. I think, and, and I haven't seen the trailer yet, but I've I've seen some photo shoots, I've seen some interviews, and I've talked to people who have worked with this show. And this is one thing I'll say. They say it's something different. It's something new. I think Demi Lovato is going to bring in an entirely young core of people who will now have interest. That's the pluses. What I would have liked to have seen is I would love to have seen her not investigating on her own because now it looks more like Rob Lowe and his sons running around America looking for Bigfoot ghosts and, and aliens. I would like to have seen her and her two friends have somebody in the UFO field, a real veteran, doesn't matter who it is, a real trusted veteran. Go Rob along. Obi Wan Kenobi, just Absolutely. one Obi Wan Kenobi to go exactly. on with you on your adventure. Yep. Absolutely. I agree. And I think that would change the entire dynamic of yeah. the show. But unfortunately for her in the UFO world, she is going to be laughed at. The TV companies, they don't care because what they look at is 55 million people following her on Twitter and another 55 plus million following her on Instagram. And that is their audience. That whole upcoming Disney uh, p uh, kids who grew up with her are all watching it. They're following now, her music. My daughter is one of them. I know. And I agree with everything you said. Now, the one danger to all of us, the one danger that we all have to consider is that she got initiated by Greer. Yes. And so uh, all this press that she's creating could bring Greer a lot of influence. And while she may end up being a welcomed member of our community, we all know the challenges we have with Greer. I hope she follows through. And this isn't just a one hit wonder like most of her music. All right, John, we'll talk to you next week. Thank you so well, much. No, I'll be around in a couple minutes, yeah? Yeah, for the round table. Yeah, yep, yep. Okay. Radio side, though. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah, yep, yep. All right, here we go. Thank you, sir.